सर वी आर लाइव नाउ विथ ऑल योर परमिशन सर आई एम स्टार्टिंग दिस सेशन ओके ओके गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन प्रेजेंट हेयर आई वेलकम ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स ऑन टूडे सेशन लेट्स वेलकम टूडे स्पीकर विद ग्रेट ऑनर प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर भरत जे परमार सर सर हैज डन एम बी बी एस एम डी डी एच ए एफ ए आई एम एस एंड प्रोफेसर एंड हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट इन पेड्रियटिक डिपार्टमेंट जाइडस मेडिकल कॉलेज एंड हॉस्पिटल दाहूद गुजरात Today, sir, is going to discuss on a topic important: neonatal components of essential newborn care. Let me tell you overview of the topic. Essential newborn care is a set of practices that critical for ensuring the health and well-being for newborns in the first few days of life. These include thermal care, initiation of breastfeeding education, eye care, immunization, and etc. To know more about this topic, I would like to invite sir and hand over this session to sir. Over to you, sir. Kindly proceed from there. okay good evening to all first of all i am very thankful to igcp group for giving opportunity to me for highlights my view regarding important neonatal components for essential newborn care and today's topic the theme is intact survival of newborn nathi kasu nathi second next important component of essential newborn care it is for the intact survival of newborn that is antenatal care safe delivery neonatal resuscitation prevention of neonatal hypothermia prevention of neonatal hypoglycemia promotion of breastfeeding prevention of infection and recognition of high risk baby referral and management which are the challenges and constraint for this essential newborn care the health and the well being of children are intimately linked with the health nutrition and status of their mother healthy and well informed mother are likely to produce healthy and a normal weight baby whereas undernourished and a high risk mother are likely to produce high risk and a low birth weight babies more than one third of the women in our country are undernourished with a body weight less than 40 kg height is less than 145 cm and they are prone to develop variety of infection genital colonization bacterial vaginosis with a high prevalence of pelvic inflammatory disease and unsatisfactory reproductive health around one half of women in our country are illiterate and they lack personal and financial independence the situation is further complicated by early marriage teenage and the frequent pregnancy antenatal care of a questionable quality is available to 75% of the pregnant women and less than 25% of the rural delivery conducted by skilled birth attendant the vision of essential newborn care is a most urgent key health priority in our country and saving newborn in india in a national priority to achieve further reduction in infant mortality rate there is a need for greater focus on a preventive rather than curative strategy because large number of the neonatal death are potentially preventable disorders such as hypothermia hypoglycemia septicemia and birth asphyxia to reduce neonatal mortality essential and a basic newborn care service should be available at all the healthcare level because they are highly cost effective the component of essential newborn care service include good quality of antenatal care at least three antenatal visits safe delivery and optimal care at birth and promotion of exclusive breastfeeding and prevention and early treatment of hypothermia and bacterial infection level of newborn care level of newborn care based on a birth weight and a gestational age 
and a three tier system of neonatal care is proposed for developing countries. Level one care, more than 80% of the newborn required minimal care, which can be provided by their mothers under supervision of basic healthcare professionals. Neonatal weighing more than 1800 gram or a gestational maturity 34 weeks and more belong to this category. The care can be provided at home, sub-center and primary health center level. The basic care and provision of the warmth, maintenance of ASFCs and promotion of breastfeeding from the mainstay of a level of one care. The traditional birth attendant and the community health worker must be trained in the art of essential perinatal care. Level two care, the infant weighing between 1200 to 1800 gram and have a gestational maturity 30 to 33, four, 33 weeks need specialized neonatal care supervised by trained nurse and pediatrician. The teaching institution, district hospitals, and the nursing home should be equipped to provide intermediate neonatal care. The equipment of resuscitation, maintenance of thermoneutral environment, and intravenous infusion, and gavage feeding, phototherapy, and exchange transfusion should be provided. The intermediate neonatal care is needed for approximately 10 to 15% of the newborn population should be available at all the hospital catering 1,000 to 1,500 deliveries per year. Level three care, the intensive neonatal care is required for baby weighing less than 1,200 gram and those born before 30 weeks of gestation. Apex yeah. Institute, or regional perinatal centers equipped with centralized oxygen and suction facilities, servo control incubators, vital sign and transcutaneous monitors, ventilators and infusion pump and so on are basically suited to provide intensive neonatal care. Approximately three to 5% of the newborn population qualify for this intent, intensive care. So what is antenatal care? Antenatal care is an important element to ensure maternal, fetal, and consequently neonatal well-being. Objectives of antenatal care aim to protect, to promote, and maintain maternal health. Second, to identify high-risk mother and plan appropriately and teach her element of neonatal care, there is a breastfeeding and sensitize her family for family planning. The schedule of care. Ideally, each mother should be attend antenatal care clinic once a month in first seven months, twice a month in next two months, and weekly thereafter, however, minimum three to four visits are essential during third, six, eight and nine. The component of antenatal care, it includes during first visit, there's a registration and complete health history and obstetrical history. But during antenatal care, antenatal visits, hemoglobin, urine, routine micro, ABO, RH type, VDRL, NHIV and USG abdomen should be done during visits. During the subsequent visits, physical evaluation, there is weight of the pregnant mother, blood pressure, and also examining for edema, and obstetrical evaluation for fetal well-being, the breast examination and counseling, and investigation, the hemoglobin, urine routine micro, and USG for any abnormal case. Nutritional supports during antenatal care, the dietary counseling and supplementation of additional 400 calories 
an iron of folic acid supplement 60 mg of iron and 500 mg of folic acid per month onwards we are giving iron tablet for the prophylaxis of anemia and the treatment of the iron deficiency anemia during pregnancy and also we are giving folic acid for prevention of anti neural tube defect in the newborn also tetanus toxoid two dose one month apart last dose at least one month before delivery to prevent tetanus neonatal in the newborn and tetanus in the mother in a previously immunized case one dose is necessary at least one month of the delivery identification of high risk mother during antenatal period and arrange more skilled care for them while continuing to provide appropriate care for other low risk mother fetal monitoring include clinical monitoring radiological physiological and biochemical evaluation of the fetus in utero assessment of gestational maturity by last menstrual period uterine fundal height fetal events appearance heart sound at a 16 to 20 weeks and quickening at 18 to 20 weeks usg assessment there is a crown hill length up to 12 week and biparietal diameter up to 28 week and femoral length beyond this age the assessment of fetal growth there is a maternal weight gain 9 to 10 kg weight gain during pregnancy serial abdominal girth there is 1 cm per week from the 20 week onwards and that there is serial increase in ufh usc assessment must for a multiple pregnancy congenital anomalies and abnormal placental morphology there is a polyhydramnios and oligohydramnios fetal head and thorax and head and abdomen ratio assessment of physiological maturity there is a lung surfactant maturity there is ls ratio more than 2 amniotic fluid optical density more than 0.15 renal maturity there is a alpha phytoprotein creatinine more than amniotic fluid creatinine more than 2 mg per dl and skin maturity by there is a amniotic fluid cytology there is a more than 20% of orange staining cell in amniotic fluid and detection of congenital anomalies by usg karyotyping am amniotic fluid biochemistry and specific enzyme assay in suspected inborn error of metabolism maternal or amniotic fluid alpha phytoprotein assessment of fetal distress fetal heart monitoring fetal activity record fetal skull blood sampling for blood gas analysis safe delivery basic delivery room care begin even before the birth an important component of essential delivery room care as follows pre delivery review of antenatal health record although the need for neonatal resuscitation may arise unexpectedly it is possible to identify many high risk pregnancy by review of antenatal records and refer them adequately it web center pre delivery pre preparation in a labor room to receive baby and resuscitate if needed this includes all the normal delivery should be attended by a trained medical or a health attendant and labor room temperature should be 28 to 30 degree centigrade to avoid sudden heat loss at birth and warmer should be switched on at least 15 minute before expected delivery a pre warm baby receptacle 
lined with clean linen should be available to receive the baby after delivery along with enough supply of extra linen. Availability of essential resuscitation equipment and the drugs should be ensured in a working condition. Universal safety precautions for infection control are necessary to protect not only the baby, it will also the health staffs. Five clean to ensure minimal asepsis during delivery include clean hand with quality hand washing and use of gloves, clean surface to receive baby, clean blade to cut the cord, and a clean clamp or a tie to tie the cord, and clean dry cord with a no local application. So there's a delivery by aseptic precaution with five clean. Intrapartum intervention. Oropharyngeal suction should a suction should soon after the delivery of a which was earlier advised in all newborn with a meconium stain amniotic fluid is a no longer recommended. Timely clamping of the cord. Normally, the umbilical cord should be cut after at least 30 seconds by the sterile blade leaving at least 2 to 3 cm of umbilical stem and tied properly to avoid sleep ligature and the bleeding and early umbilical cord clamping. Less than 30 seconds, there is not recommended unless the neonate is asphyxiated and needs to be moved immediately for resuscitation. Early clamping of cord is recommended baby with RH isoimmunization and the first born twin. And the delayed cord clamping is recommended for IUGR baby and anemic baby. Third important component is the neonatal resuscitation. Although the most of the newborn do not require any resuscitation beyond the maintenance of temperature, suction of airway, and mild stimulation, adverse perinatal event, there is a birth asphyxia, may preclude smooth neonatal cardiopulmonary transition unless assisted. Primary goal of neonatal resuscitation is to establish adequate respiration and a cardiac output in asphyxiated newborn at a birth to prevent early neonatal morbidity and mortality as well as late sequelae of hypoxic ischemic damage. The basic principle of neonatal resuscitation include measure to restore and to maintain four cardinal body function. There is temperature, airway, breathing, and circulation, often referred TABC of resuscitation, temperature, airway, breathing, and circulation. Resuscitation alert. Resuscitation alert required in a preterm or a postterm delivery. Malpresentation, there's a breach, life, or a transfer life, obstructed or a prolonged labor, signs of fetal distress, there's a meconium stain like amnia, altered fetal heart sound or movement, and abnormal taste for fetal well being, and a premature rupture of the membrane cord prolapse, cord around the nape, interventional delivery, LSCS, and for such delivery, and the low upgar score at one minute, it is less than four. It requires resuscitation. The high risk pregnancy, which are the high risk pregnancy? Maternal factors when the age below 16 or above 40 years. Parity, there's a primary gravida or a grand multipara. Maternal malnutrition, there is hemoglobin less than 8 gram, weight less than 40 kg, and height less than 145 centimeters. 
in mother pregnant mother there is a severe and deficiency anemia and chronic medical disease diabetes hypertension cardiopulmonary and the renal disease and rh negative blood group and bad obstetric history obstetric factors there is a multiple pregnancy acute medical and surgical illness abdominal trauma during pregnancy torch infection or sexually transmitted disease in the pregnant mother pregnancy induced hypertension preeclampsia and eclampsia vaginal bleeding there is a placenta previa and antepartum hemorrhage and polyhydrocnus oligohydrocnus and fetal factor there is abnormal maturity or abnormal life with congenital malformation so tabc of neonatal resuscitation the temperature control warm warm thunder radiant warmer drying of the baby removal of the wet linen airway patency by proper pos positioning oropharyngeal suction breathing by tactile stimulation positive pressure breathing and endotracheal intubation circulation by chest compression and medication a cord blood sample must be collected for grouping and cross matching and screening for intrauterine infection there is a torch infection receiving the newborn the prevention of sudden hypothermia at birth is a most important component or immediate newborn care as soon as the cord is cut baby should be received in a pre warm tray transferred under the warmer and wiped gently to clean and dry and the no extra effort should be made to remove vermix and that protect against hypothermia wet linen after wiping the baby should be discarded and the chain warm chain to prevent hypothermia in newborn the warm chain is a set of interlink procedure carried out at birth and the later which will be minimize the likelihood of hypothermia in all newborn baby must be kept warm at the place of birth at home and hospital and during the transportation from home to hospital or within the hospital common situation where the cold stress can occur cold stress occur at birth after giving bath during changing the nappy and cloth malfunctioning heat source or removing the baby from the heat source and while transporting the sick baby in the hospital step to prevent heat loss in a lower room keep the delivery room at 25 degree centigrade and the newborn care corner temperature is maintained at 30 degree centigrade and drying immediately and dry with one towel remove the wet towel and covered with another pre warm towel and a warm transportation step to prevent heat loss in a postnatal ward by promotion of breastfeeding appropriate clothing covering the head and extremity keep the mother and the baby together kangaroo mother care and keep the room warm and postpone the bathing till next day how to keep the baby warm use the dry warm towel to hold the baby at birth and remove the wet towel after cleaning adequate and appropriate clothing skin to skin contact next to the mother rooming in kangaroo mother care and radiant warmer in the nursery and keep the room temperature of the baby more than 25 degrees centigrade how to keep the room warm avoid using the air conditioner and during the summer and don't use ceiling fans especially at a high speed and keep the window and door 
closed in a winter and warm the room by turn. Kangaroo mother care. Kangaroo mother care is a special way of caring for a low birth weight baby and it improves their health and well-being by promoting effective thermal control, breastfeeding and infection prevention and bonding. The two components of kangaroo mother care are skin-to-skin -skin yeah. contact, early continuous and a prolonged skin-to-skin -skin between the mother and her baby is a basic component of kangaroo mother care. The infant is placed on her mother's chest between the breast. Exclusive breastfeeding. The baby on a kangaroo mother care is breastfed exclusively. Skin-to-skin -skin contact promote lactation and thus facilitated exclusive breastfeeding. And the prerequisite for kangaroo mother care support the mother in hospital and home and a post discharge follow -up. Which are the benefits of kangaroo mother care? It effective th thermal control, increased breastfeeding rate, early discharge of the baby, less morbidity at apnea and infection, less stress to the family to the mother and family and better infant bonding. Another important component of essential newborn care is a prevention of hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia is the commonest metabolic problem in a newborn defined as blood glucose value less than 35 mg per dl during for three hours less than 40 mg per dl between 3rd and 24th hour and 45 mg per dl beyond first day with the clinical manifestation irrespective of the gestation. Etiology of this hypoglycemia, the normal fetal glucose level are two thirds of maternal value, which drops further during the first two hour before rising again to normalize by three to four hour of the age and poor fetal reserve in a preterm and the low birth weight and delayed feeding are the most common cause of neonatal hypoglycemia. Clinical manifestation of hypoglycemia not necessarily correlated with the blood glucose level and most of the cases present during second and third day with abnormal movement, there is jitteriness, tremors and the convulsion. And abnormal behavior, there is apathy, limpness, refusal of feed and coma and autonomic disturbance in hypoglycemia, that is recurrent apnea, tachycardia, sudden pallor and sweating. The diagnostic test raised low glucose level, preferably standard method, destro sticks through the adequate for a screening are not reliable at a very low glucose level. Prevention of hypoglycemia includes early breastfeeding, routine glucose monitoring in high risk newborn at third hour 24. 48 and 72 hour of life and prevention and treatment of precipitating factor that is hypothermia and sepsis. Risk factor for neonatal hypoglycemia. In the preterm or a low birth weight baby or IUGR baby, they prone to develop hypoglycemia. Last for date baby, or a post-term baby, they prone to develop hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia also occur in infant or diabetic mother. Hypoglycemia also occur in a delayed or inadequate feeding. Hypoglycemia also occur in RH incompatibility and exchange transfusion. In case of polythysemia, sepsis and hypothermia, 
they are the risk factor for the neonatal hypoglycemia and also inborn error of metabolism is a risk factor for neonatal hypoglycemia so how to manage hypoglycemia the management depend on the severity of hypoglycemia iv correction is recommended only in a symptomatic baby asymptomatic hypoglycemia does not need iv correction and treated with adequate feeding and additional sugar fortified feed if necessary however the case with blood glucose less than 25 mg per dl must be reassessed after 30 minutes of the feeding and need maintenance of iv dextrose therapy as below if it persists more than less than 35 mg per dl manifest hypoglycemia is treated with iv bolus 2 ml per kg 10% dextrose and subsequently all symptomatic baby should receive maintenance iv dextrose 10% 2 to 12 mg per kg per minute till glucose level approach 60 mg per dl followed by gradual tapering resistant hypoglycemia resistant hypoglycemia to the glucose bolus is treated in order of preference with iv hydrocortisone 5 mg per kg iv or im glucagon 300 mg per kg it really required and iv and oral disoxide 25 mg per kg per day there is 8 hourly glucagon is more useful in a high insulin hypoglycemia there is a infant of diabetic mother and hemolytic disease of newborn outcome of hypoglycemia untreated symptomatic hypoglycemia may be fatal though timely intervention ensure dramatic recovery persistent hypoglycemia in newborn may leave neurodevelopmental problem in 30 to 70% cases promotion of breastfeeding it is essential to help the mother of healthy newborn baby to establish breastfeeding as soon as possible after delivery exclusive breastfeeding should be given for the first 6 month of life and complementary feeding could start after 6 month of life so which are the advantage of breastfeeding the benefits to the baby there's a complete breast milk is a complete food and specific easily digested and a well absorbed and it protect against infection and also it promote emotional bonding and a better brain growth benefit to the mother the breast feeding help in involution of uterus it delay pregnancy there is a lactational amenorrhea and lower risk of breast cancer and ovarian cancer and decrease mother workload benefits to the family and society the breast feeding saves the money promote the family planning decrease the need for hospitalization and contribute to child survival breast feeding should be continued during the diarrhea as well as other illness to prevent malnutrition in the baby it help the baby to get optimal nutrition and recover from illness faster the good attachment and a good position will ensure effective sucking and it prevent sore nipple and the breast engorgement infant take several slow deep suck followed by swallowing and there is a pause means effective sucking so for good amount of this breast milk 
three important points. One is good attachment, second good position, and third effective sucking necessary. Breastfeeding is considered adequate if the infant passes. So how to assess breast milk is enough or not? So infant should pass urine six to eight times. Also it sleep two to three were upper speed and second weight gain. So today's lecture, the key message is for the promotion of extrusive breastfeeding. Put the baby to feed at breast as soon as possible after the birth, preferably in a delivery room. This is important for mother, baby and the milk production. On the first day, breast milk is thick and yellowish. It is known as colostrum. Feeding this milk provides nutrition and it prevents infection. So do not discard colostrum. Colostrum is rich in vitamin A. It also protect eye. Keep the baby close to the mother. It is safe for a baby to sleep with mother. Mother may lie down, sit on bed or chair and floor to breastfeed her baby. Breastfeed during the day and night. Ideal frequency at least 8 to 10 times in 24 hours whenever the baby cries with the hunger. The more the baby suck at breast, more milk at breast will produce and healthier the baby become. Give baby only breast milk up to first six months is a exclusive breastfeeding. Do not give any good tea water or grass water or honey or animal or a milk powder before six months of baby. Never use bottle or pacifier in baby. Prevention of infection. There's a clean chain. Baby are securely placed in their mother's womb. When they born, they have to be protected from adverse environment of surrounding. So cleanliness at delivery reduce the risk of infection for the mother and baby. So cleanliness during delivery, five clean, especially to prevent neonatal sepsis and tetanus. So cleanliness required mother, family, health and health professional to avoid harmful traditional practice and prepare necessary materials. So hand washing is a single most important step to be emphasized both to the family member and health care workers. So component of clean chain, there is five clean, there's a six clean during delivery, clean attendant hands, there's a washing of hand with a shop and clean delivery surface, clean delivery, clean attendant hand, clean delivery surface, clean tie and clean cloth to wrap the baby clean cloth to wrap the mother and after delivery, all caregiver should wash hand before handling the baby. Feed only breast milk, keep the cord clean and dry, do not apply anything on a umbilical cord and use the clean cloth as a diaper and napkin and wash your hand after changing diaper or napkin and keep the baby clothed and wrapped with the head covered to prevent hypothermia. Last not the least, component is a high risk baby. So recognition of high risk baby, referral and management. High risk newborn defined as newborn with abnormal maternal, antenatal, peripartum, or neonatal indicators suggestive of higher than normal risk of the morbidity and mortality who should be under close observation by experienced pediatrician and nurse. So indicators are high risk newborn may be identified at birth. There's a high risk pregnancy, high risk delivery, high postnatal characteristic of abnormal gestation birth weight, there's a low birth weight and congenital malformation. 
early identification of high risk pregnancy during antenatal visits referral to suitable neonatal care center any possible intrauterine intervention comprehensive review of a case record before delivering for a resuscitation alert and educate resuscitation facility and expertise at a time of delivery assessment of delivery newborn delivered newborn for any high risk profile or a warning signal and transfer to the appropriate neonatal care centers thank you thank you so much sir for giving your precious time and sharing knowledge with us and making this session informative one i definitely think this session knowledge is going to help all the participant who have joined this session we have received some question if you allow can i take this question with all your permission yes 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 sir first question i can see is what is einc protocol einc uh, yes sir the question ah. is sir what is einc i mean ci the question is uh, not yeah. elaborated, sir. Huh. I think uh, he, hmm. he is asking about the neonatal essential newborn care no, protocol. Essential also. newborn care, there is a uh, seven component is there. Antenatal care, safe delivery, neonatal resuscitation, prevention of hypothermia, prevention of hypoglycemia, prevention of infection, promotion of breastfeeding, and identifying the high-risk baby referral and management. Okay, thank you so much, sir, for uh, elaborating and answering this question, sir. Moving forward, I can see another question. What is the early essential newborn care, EENC, and how it can be benefit baby? Early newborn care. That's the first, the, initially, that's a, uh, uh, known as essential newborn care. Then recently, there is an early newborn care. And very recently, it designated as the first golden hour care. So any child, there is a first thing after, uh, before doing neonatal resuscitation, we should see three things, whether term or not, second, crying and breathing, and third, muscle tone. If there's a flex posture, good muscle tone, no need of resuscitation. If crying and breathing, no need of resuscitation. And the baby, there's a term baby, no need of resuscitation. It is only required in the preterm baby or a low birth weight baby. And another... Okay, thank you so much, sir, for explaining it and answering this question, sir. As I can see... Hello. Next. Hello, sir, I am audible? Yes, yes. Yeah, sir. I think there was some network issue, sir. And thank you so much for answering the question, sir. I can see there is no more question, but one feedback is from Dr. Animesh. He has written wonderful session, well explained. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. I hope that uh, Dr. Animesh has really enjoyed this talk, sir. As there is no more question, shall we conclude this session with all your permission? Okay, okay. 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 Thank you so much, sir. And take care of yourself. Hope to see you again with different topics, sir. Okay. Have a